Hello students, welcome to La Excellence. Welcome to the weekly magazine session where we'll be focusing from 13th August to 19th August 2017. As this is very close to mains, till September, there will be issues which may be asked from mains point of view, that is 2017 mains point of view. And at the same time, it is very, very important for you to focus from now on for next year prelims as well. So most of the issues we will be trying to cover from both prelims and mains point of view. I'll be telling those important information that is required from prelims and also those that are required from mains. We're extremely sorry for the delay because of some health issues I could not record on time. But within a couple of days, you'll be getting all the magazine videos, right? And on the request of few students, we will be explaining few concepts in detail because there are freshers and they need some basic information regarding the subject as well. So please try to understand the basics and also the application part of issues and how to connect it with the subjects that are there in our syllabus. Right. So let's quickly move on to the first topic. The topic that is given for essay is social media and its impact on the society. When we talk about social media, in our syllabus, they have a special mention when it comes to internal security threats, where they talk about role of media and social media. But it is very important for you to know from social issues point of view or from sociology point of view, the impact of social media on the society because today we see society being divided clearly on the basis of right wing left wing centrist or you can see there is only two things that is one who are pro hindutva and the other one who are called as pseudo seculars so these are extreme versions which the society has been divided because of the social media if you share a particular point you will be considered to be pseudo liberal if you don't share it you will be considered to be a fascist so what are these that the society is facing and what is the impact of this on the society and its mindset. So are we going through a phase of division in the society through social media or are we going through a phase of unification through the social media? You can give some international examples like 99 versus 1 which happened in United States post recession where we observe that intellectuals from across the world they use this facebook or social media as a platform to communicate and educate the people who were actually protesting against the rich one percent in united states we can also talk about arab spring where facebook played a very important role and today we can say within India, the impact of social media on the government policies as well. But most importantly, I want you to focus on the society. Whenever we talk about society, it may be with respect to women issues, children issues, or it may be with respect to caste or religion. You can take each factor and try to see what is the impact of this on the society. So I'm just trying to give a brief about what are the points that may be expected from this particular essay. So whenever you are trying to write any argument which you like, whether positive or negative, try to bring all these factors into consideration, right? So after this, let's quickly move to paper one where we'll be focusing on geographical aspects especially with respect to Antarctica. In Antarctica the researchers from Britain and other European countries have actually discovered the largest volcanic region on earth. As we are all aware we have no much information with respect to Antarctica. And when it comes to UPSC, we hardly read anything with respect to Antarctica. Even when it comes to Atlas, we just try to focus only on the major continents. And when it comes to Antarctica, even we don't try to see the mountains and other places which are there. But what is more important now is, with scientific innovations going on in Antarctica, as you are aware, there are certain observatories of countries which are being placed to study Antarctica in detail and most of them are focusing on climate change issues. 
But apart from that, it is very important for us to know about the Earth's geography and if there are any minerals and others that are actually available in this region. So, first important aspect that you need to know with respect to Antarctica is, Antarctica is also undergoing certain plate movements. That is, whenever we talk about plate tectonics in geography, we usually come across three types of movements. One, where two plates, we call the earth is actually divided into plates, and there is a possibility that two plates may move towards each other, right? And there is a possibility that if you have a single plate and if volcanoes are moving in this direction or magma is moving in opposite direction in the lithosphere, then we usually observe that the plate will start moving away from each other. And the third most important aspect is you may see the plates moving parallel to each other. So this type of boundary is called as convergent boundary. This type of boundary is called as divergent boundary. And this type of boundary is actually called as transform boundaries. So in Antarctica, where we are focusing on the volcanic region is usually a divergent boundary. So when I say it is a divergent boundary, the meaning of this is the magma is pulling the plate apart. That is, they are moving on either direction. So let us see what are the different structures that you get when a plate move in opposite direction. Whenever plates move in opposite direction, first, if you have a plate like this and it is moving in opposite direction, because of this, you will usually observe cracks, correct? And the cracks may occur at two points. I'm just taking a simple example, two points, cracks has occurred. And with further movement, you usually will observe that this particular portion where cracks had happened will go down because there will be further pulling of the Plates. And due to this, there will be a gap present. If rainfall happens, then usually we observe this is surrounded by water. And with further pulling apart, we usually observe that these will move away, giving rise to some volcanoes coming up in this fashion. So this is what we call to be volcanic ridges which are present along the Antarctica coast. So I just want to tell you a few important aspects. I have not explained complete plate tectonics because that is geography. But here to understand, I'm just trying to give you a basic concept that is if you have a plate and the plate is moving up away from each other, first thing you get cracks. And wherever the cracks has happened, if you further pull it, you will usually observe that the part where the cracks had happened will go down. And if water accumulates there, then I would call it to be a rift valley. And then with further moving apart, usually the ocean water enters into the rift valley and they form linear sea. The best example for linear C is your Red Sea, which is actually present between Africa and Arabian Peninsula. And if you further start expanding it, that is, if the magma pulls the plates further apart, then you get oceans being formed. And in between the ocean, there will be some sort of volcanic mountains. So this is what we call to be mid-Atlantic ridges or mid-oceanic ridges. They are present along with the plate boundaries mainly because of the diversion. That is, two plates are moving away from each other. Now, when we actually consider Antarctica, you can observe that in Antarctica, when these two plates are moving away from each other, can you see some portions of this magma coming up? Right? 
so this will form volcanic mountains and in antarctica unfortunately this region is surrounded by ice if you have magma that is igneous rocks coming from below the earth surface usually you may get minerals in this region so when we understand the volcanic rich regions and if we can actually observe dormant volcanoes then usually this minerals can be extracted so in future antarctica can become a good source of minerals for us right so this is very very important for us to understand then the next important issue is actually with respect to North Coil Reservoir project in Jharkhand and Bihar. So the cabinet has cleared the proposal for construction of North Coil Reservoir project. So usually UPSC will ask you some factual information with respect to this particular. So you just need to look at some of these factual informations. That is, it raises on the Ranchi Plateau, very important. And its principal tributaries may be asked. Most importantly, they will ask you about the national park through which the river flows. So these three informations are important when it comes to North Coil River. It is important from prelims point of view. Next important aspect is with respect to Quit India movement where Indian government parliament has celebrated this. So high possibility there can be a question about Quit India movement in mains. So guys please try to read next year about Quit India movement least possibility but still please try to prepare for Quit India movement from both prelims and mains point of view. And those guys who are preparing for mains please be careful about Champaran Satyagraha which was also in news because of the centenary celebrations right so please go through this history always remember 75 years 100 years will be important so please try to connect it fine so after this let's quickly move to next paper the next important issue is actually with respect to health as you're all aware there is a debate going on with respect to right to health to be made a fundamental right of every citizen. Whenever we talk about right to health, the major debate that is there in the society is, should we try to reach to every citizen of the country through public sectors or should we go to ensure that every individual gets quality health care services by providing insurance facility to every individual? So the debate is whether service or health sector should be improved by improving the facilities in the government hospitals. And you would have come across the Gorakhpur tragedy, which we will be seeing in this magazine itself. And the problem is how can we improve the functioning of the government hospitals so that the health facility can be provided to everyone. Or should we focus on insurance-based schemes where the private hospitals will be included and the public can go to private hospitals and get the facilities and government will be paying to them. Some of the problems associated with the insurance-based is in Karnataka and several other states where you saw health care being provided by the state governments, there were some challenges associated with this. One of the major problem was misuse of these funds by doctors. In some cases, it went to such an extreme that even though the patient is not suffering from a particular disease, he was diagnosed wrongly and they made operations to get more money. So these type of problems were seen when it comes to insurance based. Public sector when we take service or facilities are the problems. Private sectors when we see they look at more profits and that is leading to more problems. So what should be the ideal way is still a debate that is going on in the country. But when it comes to this particular case where an Odisha based social entrepreneur is trying to move towards telemedicine where in rural areas there will be certain facilities available for the 
patients to go to these get checked and on the basis of the disease they will get assistance through communications that is through telephone conversations this is what we see with respect to the new thing which the odisha entrepreneurs are coming across the central government has accepted this and they are planning to make it a mass based movement not only in odisha but in the entire country so this will solve some of the major problems like doctors are actually not willing to go to rural areas and work there for long time because they will not see enough money and they are openly saying that we would have spent so much money to get the mbbs certificate and at the same time if we go to rural areas and work there then we may not be exposed to new sorts of things as well so doctors are not willing to go to rural areas to work for long period of time so to reduce this if this telemedicine can be effectively used and the central government is also planning for digitalization where if this can be combined with treating or talking to doctors directly and if the medicines can be made available at the rural areas itself and the facilities if it can be made available at the rural areas itself then we can actually see a big change where the doctors or best facilities can be made available to the rural areas at minimum cost which will be beneficial and this will also help the governments in making sure that right to health will be a fundamental right over a period of time again the next important issue is actually with respect to national human rights commission talking to the up government with respect to gorakhpur tragedy several newspapers carry different news some said that it is a massacre or murder by the government because the government did not act at the right time government had not made proper payments to these hospitals and the suppliers who especially supplies oxygen cylinders and as they did not supply it on time there were lot of problems associated with gorakhpur cases and the second incident where we are coming across where people are saying that it was done intentionally to ensure that the yogi government will be suppressed or some negative publicity can be made with respect to this particular government so these are some of the things which we see in the newspaper and until and unless there is proper reports you will not see any questions with respect to the gorakhpur tragedy so what can be the question as of now the question can be with respect to national human rights commission which is a statutory body and is constituted based on human rights act 1993 so they may give you consider the following statements with respect to nhrc and first important point will be this the next important point is actually with respect to the recommendations made by nhrc is it just advisory or is it binding in nature so this is also important NHRC submits annual report to the central government and state governments please go through this in lakshmi kant once and see what exactly they are focusing on NHRC is enough when we actually look at this particular case from last two weeks we are actually coming across some sort of debate in the country with respect to all india judicial services some high courts have said no to this mainly because district courts will be actually under the control of high courts and the supreme court has actually said yes we need to have all india judicial services so that the best people can go to the district judges unfortunately when we actually look at the procedure and when we look at how the promotions happens or how exactly seats are filled in the high courts we usually observe that by promotion from the district judges no one will go to the high court judges much usually most of the people who reach to high court will be from the bar council who has 10 years of experience or so so 
here we are trying to give you some facts which says that there is no case for all india judicial service because if we look at the present trend then there is no need for this first important thing is that a legal education system in india is getting diluted systematically there are only very few institutions of excellence and when we actually look at salaries conditions of service and career progression opportunities they are very limited for the district judges that is as i told you people who are working as district judges they do not get much opportunity to reach to the high court so this is not very good then a national exam may ignore the local laws and customs which actually exist in various states because when we talk about the customary laws in tribal areas northeast and other things they do not consider the local things and when you actually go for a national level exam then the problem is that you will see people from one part of the country working in another part of the country where cultural differences exist and the district judges may not be in a position to understand the sensitivities that are actually present across societies so that will lead to uniformity of laws across the country when it comes to culture yes it's good in one form but when you actually look at constitution which has given some religious rights to the people then this actually violates that fundamental right especially when it comes to religion so actually the argument is that rather than focusing on all india judicial service focus on efficiency corruption and other issues which are prevalent in the district judges or in the district courts which may actually benefit the entire society and in this week there was a controversial issue which has been taken up by the supreme court especially when it comes to lau jihad case so when we talk about the lau jihad itself there is a problem here when we actually try to link everything with terrorism on one hand and when we look at the fundamental rights of people on the other hand so after 18 years it's mandatory for the government to accept the choice of the woman where the legal rights says that if woman goes on for conversion or marriage on the basis of her choice without force then you cannot blame it now whether she is trapped or whether you are trying to look into the aspect from a communal angle or terrorist angle then the issue becomes different the main reason why this issue has been highlighted is there are lot of incidences before this also which were called as lau jihad but now it has got some sort of significance mainly because the high courts of kerala and supreme court has taken up the case to see and verify whether this can be called as lau jihad or not so as there is lot of controversy around it until and unless there is a proper judgment with respect to this particular case please don't go in detail with respect to this whoever writes articles on this they will be having their own personal opinions but for upsc exam who is focusing on bureaucracy you should be thinking about the legal aspects alone that is one what is the impact of these on the societies second is there any legal provision which can actually prevent women who like a person from another religion to get converted and then marry him so is there any possibility so all this has to be considered but that will become more legal studies so don't worry much you have to focus mostly up on the judgment which the supreme court will give over a period of time then the next important issue is actually with respect to generic drug deflation that is the prices of generic drugs are actually reducing first of all we need to understand what is the meaning of generic drug see pharmaceutical companies whenever they identify 
any major disease which is spread across countries and if it has affected major people then usually they try to produce medicine for this particular disease and initially they will be given patent protection for some years which varies from one country to another country now after this particular time let's say 20 years where these companies would have made enough profits and the patent will be ended that is after 20 years the exclusive patent that this product can be manufactured only by that particular company will end and then the entire procedure of the medicine everything will be made available to the public and at that point of time several other companies will actually start manufacturing a duplicate version of this brand company so when others start manufacturing they are not investing in research and development they are investing only in production and the production costs are very less when compared to this and there is not only one company which will be producing this but there will be several companies which will be willing to purchase similar versions of this drug and due to this what happens usually the prices will fall they go down to such an extent companies are not in a position to even produce this at that rate so we are seeing that the prices are going so low in the generic drugs and due to this the brand image companies are becoming worried who had got patents now what they are doing they are trying to increase the cost so they are planning to make more profits during their patent stage itself so because of this some medicines are becoming much costlier whereas the other ones are becoming much cheaper in the long run it is believed that consumers will be affected they are already affected because overall spending on medicines has not reduced and there is a fear that in future these companies may not go for innovation or even if they go then the problems will be not more companies will be willing to invest to produce these generic drugs and when they are not willing to then again the prices of these generic drugs will also start increasing see guys whenever there is fight between companies they try to reduce the prices so that they can capture the market but when they know that the prices are going so much low that they are not in a position to compete with other companies then they stop at this point of time there will be hardly one or two companies which will be left again this would lead to monopolies in economy we usually say the deep pockets whichever companies has deep pockets the meaning of this is who can offer to go for huge losses so initially even if they see losses by that time the entire market will be swiped off and then you will usually observe that these companies will start making money over a period of time to just give a simple example when we talk about ola or uber usually you see initially that the rates are lower than autos whenever the rates are much lower then people are getting used to using ola and uber over a period of time if autos reduce then we usually observe that this people will start increasing the prices because there is nothing much available to them so this is what we say deep pockets initially they are willing to go for losses later they will recover it through some other means ultimately in long run it will have impact on the society so this is what they are actually talking about these generic drug deflation just go through this once especially go through the definition of generic drugs right so if you can see this it is more than enough the next important issue is actually with respect to the economic survey which focuses up on what has actually happened in the country and why there is decline in GDP. So here it says that it is not only demonetization but there are several other factors 
even before demonetization, which is affecting India's GDP. So some of the points which they try to focus is with respect to the problems associated with investment in the country, the problems associated with production in farming and industries. So let us see one after the other. So if we look, the first important thing they try to focus is with respect to lower investment ratio. Investments both by the public and the private sector has reduced. And for this, the government is planning to increase its expenditure so that if private players are not in a position to invest more, it becomes the responsibility of the government to invest. Second, low farm prices have actually affected. Whenever the farm prices increases, then usually they contribute to the GDP. Then cutting back on developmental spending by state governments and most importantly they are going for things like loan waivers. Whenever they go for loan waivers not only in UP even in several other states for elections they are promising these loan waivers and whenever they go for loan waivers then this burden will be on the state exchequer and this would actually lead to deficit. Then we are also talking about twin balance sheet syndrome, which is very, very important this year when it comes to economy. The most important aspect what they focus here is twin balance sheet syndrome. There is problem in balance sheets of both private sector and banks. That is in banks, the non-performing assets have increased. The meaning of this is the number of people who are not repaying the loans on time has actually increased. This is first problem. Second important problem is when we look at the private sectors, these private sectors, wherever they have invested, especially when it comes to transportation and all, they are not seeing profits. And because of this, they are not in a position to invest more. And as the non-performing assets has increased, banks are also not willing to give more to these private sectors to invest. So as the income level of the private sectors has reduced and the non-performing assets of the banks have increased, these two have led to balance sheet problem both in private sector and also in the banking sector. Then when we look at the index of industrial production, we usually observe that it is also seeing a negative growth. Strengthening of rupee is making imports attractive, but it is actually causing more trouble to exports. And there is global economic problem where there is weak demand, not only within the country, but also outside country. So, what are the factors not important but what is more important for us is to look at what are the areas that we need to focus to improve first we need to ensure that the savings increases whenever the savings increases in the banks then from there the investment can also increase savings to investment ratio needs to be increased inflation we are seeing it is low but because of loan waivers, seventh pay commission and the food prices which may vary on the basis of the climate, usually we may say that inflation may increase over a period of time. But now we are on the safe period. Exchange rate has been worrisome because there is no demand externally and internally as well. And the rupee value has been in trouble and because of this you see more imports from other countries rather than Indian products being attractive outside. The fiscal position of the states economic survey has clearly mentioned that the fiscal position that is the revenue and expenditure of the states is going bad because we observe there is a scheme of the government called as Uday. Right? In this scheme, usually the loss making power discom companies or the losses of these power discoms are usually purchased by the state government and they are actually planning to ensure that from now on these power discoms will be profitable. 
but the biggest worry is that this will be more expenditure on the state government than revenue second important thing there is huge demand after seventh pay commission that every state has to go for some sort of pay commission so that will add to more burden on the states third due to elections and loan waivers this is also creating another sort of pressure on the governments so all these have actually led to bad physical position of the states at last again they talk about double balance sheet challenges that is with respect to non performing assets of banks and low profitability of some sectors especially power telecom and steel which is worrisome because the private sector which has to invest in these sectors whenever they don't then the growth rate in this reduces and ultimately gdp will be affected so these are some of the major things that we need to study when it comes to the slowdown in india's economy again when we'll be taking economic survey i'll be going in detail and explaining you about all these factors but what is more important for you as of now is to consider these facts the next important issue is actually with respect to ms swaminathan interview where they are focusing on increasing the income of the farmer usually we tell to students to avoid interviews but swaminathan is very important when it comes to agriculture sector second important thing is that government has also promised to ensure that the income of the farmers will be doubled by 2022 so if you have to achieve this what are the measures that needs to be taken high possibility there can be an essay with respect to this as one single kurukshetra has dealt completely upon how to increase the farm income of the farmers to show that there is a possibility that it will double the income by 2022 so you can use some of the points from his interview in your answers when they asked about how can we ensure income security to the farmer one of the basic question is should we go for more loan waivers because this is what most of the governments promise yes loan waivers will benefit politically where they get votes but when it comes to increasing the farmers income it is not effective so for this he says three alternative ways are very very important to increase the income first important thing is that rise in minimum support price and procurement price here you should be knowing the difference between minimum support price and procurement price when we talk about minimum support price this is given to the crops before sowing so that based on these prices farmers can decide which one they should grow so that the income will be stagnant or they will be knowing what is the income that they are going to get so this is one way whenever i increase the minimum support price then farmers input will be same and when the output comes the price that they get will be usually more due to this the income will increase second important thing is procurement price so i have told farmers that you if you grow rice at 100 rupees then i am willing to purchase the rice at 100 rupees but usually when it comes to procurement price what they say is let us say government has fixed rice per kilo as 100 rupees and if everyone goes and sells it to the government then who will sell to the market so what will market do market will usually purchase the rice at 110 rupees so farmers will not be willing to sell everything to the government they will focus on the market as much as possible but government needs rice for pds and other things so what will government do government will also offer 110 rupees so that farmers will sell either to the market or to the government let's say government needs more than the market then usually government will increase the procurement price to 111 or 115 rupees so that farmers will think if i sell to the government i will have 5 rupees more profit and sell more to the government but when it comes to minimum support price what we usually observe is that if government says that i will pay 100 rupees per kilo for rice how much ever rice is grown in the country if government has to purchase everything 
then they have to purchase at 100 rupees and it is a promise made by the government that how much ever public per produces they will be purchasing everything but when it comes to procurement price they can say i will purchase 1000 quintals of rice at this particular price so minimum support price if it is given then government has to procure any amount that is being produced but when it comes to procurement price they have a measure where they will say only this much i will procure at this particular price so swaminathan says that we need to increase the minimum support price and we need to increase the procurement price when these two are increased obviously we will see that the income of the farmers will increase but the biggest challenge of this is this would lead to artificial inflation because rice which was earlier 100 now it has become 110 rupees and this increase is mainly associated with the procurement price of the government so here what is more important for us is government has to manage both the income and also inflation second important thing is productivity has to be increased today let us say india is having less productivity when compared to china or any other developed countries the reason for this is we put more fertilizers and all but the output will be usually less there are several factors associated with this. Some may be associated with the size of the farm field and availability of mechanization and all. Your syllabus specifically mentions about mechanization of agriculture. So whenever we talk about all these factors, it is very, very important for us to note that if per hectare we were producing two quintals of rice, now we should ensure that it is going beyond five quintals per year so these are some of the measures that we need to take third important thing we spoke mostly about money given by the government second we also spoke about increasing productivity third we need to focus on there is almost around fifty thousand crores worth food products which are rotten in this country just because there is no proper storage facilities nor there are better food processing industries so if we can have food processing industries where value can be added to this then that would actually lead to increasing the rates by the farmers or sometimes the farmers can go to some crops like biofuels and all which can also provide them good income then comes sustainable agriculture when we are talking about sustainable agriculture we need to focus on evergreen revolution as you are aware swaminathan is the father of green revolution but here he is talking about evergreen revolution by overcoming the problems which we saw in the green revolution some of the important problems are so you saw lot of insecticides and pesticides being used which has degraded the soil so he talks about integrated pest management the nutrients npk is used excessively by the farmers which is again leading to soil depletion special agricultural zones has to be set up similar to industrial zones and soil health cards should be ensured so that the soil health can be managed effectively after all this it is important for us to focus on organic farming as well and india should focus more on managing monsoons the next important issue is actually with respect to aerosols or black carbon that is being emitted by aeroplanes which are affecting ozone and also monsoon as you're all aware ozone is very important for us mainly because it protects us against the harmful radiations coming from the sun unfortunately earlier we were of the view that when we actually look at black carbon particles what exactly are this these are pure carbon particles which are present in the atmosphere and they are released into the atmosphere mainly by anthropogenic factors that is human factors especially associated with improper burning of fossil fuels so whenever you burn fossil fuels improper burning of fossil fuels will actually lead to emission of carbon black carbon particles particulate matters will be present and what happens 
these particles have the capacity to absorb outgoing terrestrial radiation. Due to this, if you have a black particle here, and if this is earth, sun's rays is falling on the earth, and the larger ones are absorbed by black carbon. And again, they are emitted back on the earth. So because of this, we usually observe more heat is present on the earth's surface. Second important thing is that whenever this black carbon is present on ice caps like this, so it absorbs more heat and melts the ice to water. So this is another major problem associated with this. So snow melting, ice melting and other factors are usually associated with this. So earlier we used to think that these black carbon and other materials travel only up to 4 kilometers and beyond that they can't move. Unfortunately, now we are actually observing that these black carbons are present in stratosphere, which is usually stable when compared to troposphere. The meaning of this is simple. So whenever we take troposphere, we usually observe that with increasing height, temperature decreases. The meaning of this is, if I am actually talking about troposphere, I am seeing warm air below and cool air above. What is the meaning? With increasing height, temperature decreases. That means cool is above, warm is below. You are all aware that cold air will be heavy. So heavy air will come down. Warm air will raise. Due to this, there will be mixing of air. This is a very important phenomena to understand troposphere. So we are talking about unstable air in troposphere because with increasing height, temperature decreases. But when we talk about stratosphere, usually we observe that with increasing height, temperature increases. The meaning of this is you will have cool below and warm above. So because of this, as you are aware, Cool is heavier, warm is lighter, so cool will be present below, warm will be present above. There will be slight mixing but not much mixing. So we call this to be a stable air. Usually in geography, in troposphere, this phenomena is called as inversion of temperature. The meaning of this is with increasing height, temperature increases. So usually whenever we talk about winters, in Delhi and other places, the land will be cool and the air which is coming in contact with the land will also be cool. And the layers which are above these cool layers will be warm. So because of this, we usually observe fog formation in Delhi. So you have cool below and warm above. During this period, if you have cool below and warm above, mixing is less. So because of this, if carbon dioxide and other things are usually emitted, they will be present in the atmosphere without mixing. So this is the problem why in Delhi you often see in news that in winters Delhi turns into a gas chamber. So this is what you need to understand when it comes to this. So guys here what did we learn? We saw that in troposphere with increasing height temperature decreases because of this Cool climate is above and warm is below. Cool is heavy, warm is lighter. There will be mixing. But when it comes to stratosphere, with increasing height temperature increases. The meaning of this is cool is below, warm is above. Cool is already heavier, warm is lighter. So mixing will be less. This is called as stable air. In troposphere, once in a while, we usually observe this temperature inversion called as inversion of temperature usually in winters where you will see fog being formed and in this fog whenever smoke is released smog will be formed similarly at greater heights especially in troposphere whenever the aircrafts are going they are releasing black carbon and this black carbon is going and getting deposited in these layers and as they absorb more heat right as they absorb more heat they become warmer and the warm air starts rising because of this the carbon particles also start moving closer to the ozone layer 
when they become closer to the ozone layer the biggest issue is that there will be chemical reactions which will lead to depletion of ozone this is what they are trying to say that is aeroplanes may affect ozone how the black carbon particles will be deposited in the stratosphere and in stratosphere they will be present and they sit on the ozone layer and whenever they sit on the ozone layer they absorb more heat and they create problem and whenever we are talking about monsoon here you need to understand that the black carbon particles wherever they get deposited they absorb sun rays more wherever you have more sun rays being absorbed the region will have high temperature and because of this high temperature the air will also be warmed warm air has a tendency to move upwards this upward moving phenomena is called as low pressure whenever the low pressure is intense and high pressure on ocean is also more let me take a scenario that is on ocean high pressure is 1000 and on land the low pressure is 800 this is one scenario another one high pressure is 1100 low pressure is 600 so can you see here the difference is only 200 and here the difference is 500 as the difference between high pressure and low pressure is more in the second case we will usually observe strong winds blowing from high pressure to low pressure whereas when it comes to the first case we usually observe that the wind force will be less because of black carbon this low pressure will reduce to 600 800 has become 600 and 1000 to 600 is also 400 earlier it was only 200 now the difference is 400 because of this the monsoon will also be affected we see increase in flooding because of this particular reason if this is present on land this is the case now let me take a scenario where you have 1800 the first case itself but the black carbon is there near the ocean so because of this what happens this high pressure may come down to 900 the difference is only 100 so if the high pressure reduces then you will usually observe that the difference is less and wind movement will be slow on the other hand whenever the low pressure reduces difference is more this leads to flooding the first case where high pressure reduces will leads to droughts second case where low pressure further reduces will lead to floods so this is what we need to understand when it comes to impact of these on ozone and monsoons in this picture they just try to explain you what are the factors which are responsible for the black carbon and what is the impact on different layers clouds and other things they get heated up and sometimes there is a possibility that these black carbons will actually act as smog around which the water droplets can accumulate sometimes if they are present in excess they may absorb more heat and make the clouds more warmer and they will not allow clouds to give rainfall remember guys clouds when they move up as temperature decreases they become cool and give rainfall but if they are warmed they expand they become warmer warm clouds do not give rainfall cool clouds or cold clouds give rainfall so we need to understand these two phenomena in detail the next important information is required from both economy point of view and also from science and technology point of view that is with respect to bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies which are gaining popularity let us understand a basic thing with respect to this in india whenever you look at any currency you can see the signature of the governor of rbi who says that if at all you give this money to the government at any point of time they will be giving you the value of that particular money correct so rbi or some other banking sectors will be third party which usually tries to ensure that whatever transactions are happening between people is happening 
with the currencies which these people usually give it to them that is whatever rbi gives that only has to be circulated so dollars and all is not acceptable in the country because they do not give guarantee but when it comes to international trade dollar is used because us gives that guarantee that if you bring back dollar we will be giving you this much money of this sort but with cryptocurrencies the biggest problem is these are not under the control of the rbi or anyone so you are not aware how much currency is being printed and what are the transactions and where it is actually used so mastercard and others are actually looking at the relevance of these cryptocurrencies as these are gaining popularity now if you talk to us citizens or so who are actually using these bitcoins they see that if you invest in bitcoins the value has increased enormously and they have huge profits so people are looking forward to work with bitcoins in future whereas china and other countries have said that given the huge size of its population and uh, it is very difficult to maintain the data who is transacting with whom without knowing proper kyc facilities and all but the point here is the blockchain technology which the mastercard and others in future may adopt is even a single transaction between two people will be present there will be codes and every transaction can be read but how far we can know the details of the people who were actually involved in this transaction is not sure but people say that each and every transaction can be recorded which will actually help the government to know how much money through bitcoins is also being used in the system the reason why we need this is see in economy we have certain concepts like money supply where we come across m0 m1 m2 m3 so here we talk about broad money narrow money and other concepts when we talk about this we actually say how much money is present in the rbi and how much money is present with the public so this is the total money which is there in the system and on the basis of the total money that is present in the system we need to be clear that how much parallel economy or black money is being generated and how much is happening what is the impact of inflation how should we control inflation should i increase the money that has to be present with the public or should i decrease the money from the public all these factors comes into picture so if i don't know how much money is being transacted in the system it will be very difficult for me to go for these monetary policies so rbi and other platforms or other banks are usually thinking that we should go for certain technologies which ensure us to know how much transaction is happening through these cryptocurrencies as well so that whenever india wants to go for any inflationary measures that will be beneficial most of the developing countries are not willing to go ahead especially countries like india china and others where digitalization and data storage or management is very difficult and where you have the sectors which are not formal that is whenever you have informal sectors present more in the system the problem increases so we have to reduce but in developed countries whenever we look there the formal sectors are more so cryptocurrencies will be more beneficial in those regions but not in our country but as they are talking about blockchain technology associated with this i request you to know that blockchain technology is associated with cryptocurrencies don't go in detail much because there are a lot of complexities once if the government identifies this and brings any measures then this would become important for us so guys at last you have questions i hope the weekly magazines are evaluated on time now there was some problem initially so thanks for bearing with us we will be giving you the required extension and also feedback to ensure that your quality is improved at the same time i just want to make a small announcement at last we will be coming up with ncrts for every subject as of now we are doing geography ncrt books 
where we are trying to cover entire geography and understand geography from NCRT language point of view. So there we will not be showing only those points which are important but we are also trying to explain so that students who did not understand geography or whenever they read NCRT books they will feel that it is very difficult. Many people tell them what to read and what not to read. You should know. If you have to clear you should know what to read and what not to read. But no one tells them properly what exactly they should read. So here we have made an attempt to tell you what are the facts that are important and why it is important and what type of questions can actually be asked. By the end of this month you will be getting those NCRT books available. You can register after that. This is just an information so that on the request we are providing these which will be beneficial for prelims and mains especially when we talk about geography. Fine? Thank you guys. Thanks for watching.